Do you know, it's blowing a go out here today. I'm in a uh, holiday park in Suffolk, where I've got a, a holiday um, home. It's a nice sunny day, but it's blowing a gale. And uh, I hope that uh, there's not too much wind noise. I've got, that's why I've got this funny pom-pom on the microphone there to try and reduce the, uh, the wind noise. Anyway, I uh, covered this portable antenna uh, basically uh, a video or so ago, but I promised I'd come back because there's some issues with it. Well, not issues, that's not fair to say it's issues. There are some things which could be improved. And one of the most obvious problems is that this antenna has got a 10 millimeter thread. And yet in amateur radio circles, all over the world, I think, certainly in America, three eighth inch thread is standard. So it means to say that you've got problems in trying to use three eighth inch attachments onto this antenna, which has got a 10 millimeter thread. They, they just don't go together. They're very close, but they're not close enough. So the purpose of this video really is to demonstrate how I overcame this problem and how once you've overcome the problem, you can actually make this antenna do a lot of things that otherwise you, it wouldn't do or you couldn't use it for. That's the purpose of this video. But, uh, I uh, think we've got rain coming in, so uh, I'm glad I've got some of the work done on this antenna. By the way, I worked um, uh, GM0HKS this morning, Will, uh, near Motherwell, um, on 40 metres with the antenna on the ground. Um, a vertical antenna on 40 metres is not the best antenna uh, because uh, you really need higher angle radiation. But you can't get away from the fact that it all goes together very quickly. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get on to the main subject, how we can make more use of this antenna by having an adapter which makes it more friendly with 3 8 inch threads. So it's on my bike and back to base. fun with the JPC-12 portable antenna. It's uh, very efficient actually because it's full size on the 17 meter band through to the 10 meter band and of course if you operate it on 6 and 4 meters it's likewise full size. On 20 meters it's almost full size and on 40 meters it's about a half size vertical. So for all practical that it's not a bad antenna for portable work and it's very easy to install but it's this 10 millimeter thread which is the real problem so let me show you how I set about modifying this antenna and making it so much more versatile the first thing you need is a short length of alloy angle and you can get that at most uh, DIY stores just cut yourself off a short length and you need to drill two holes. One is 10 mil and the other is 3 8 inch. Very similar size holes but um, makes a difference. And you then need to get yourself some 10 millimeter bolts and nuts and I found that home base stock them. Uh, the bolts are too long but all you need to do is to put a nut onto the bolt near the bolt head and then put a hacksaw in it, uh, cut off the excess and then as you undo the nut it will smooth out any slight rough edges on the cut and then you've got a bolt that is just short enough for your needs. So then you've got a length of angle iron and two holes in it and you've also got your two bolts. Now on the other side of the other edge of the angle iron I drilled a couple of holes and this is to accept some thinner bolts and wing nuts so that you can attach radials more easily or extra radials. And finally you'll also need to get yourself a 3 8 inch bolt and all these items can probably be got from Amazon if not to your local DIY store. 
Now that we've got a bolt that fits into the socket on the antenna system and a nut that fits onto the bolt area of the system, the whole thing becomes more adaptable. And here's one of the prime reasons for the modification. You can see I've got a 3 inch bolt going into the mag mount there and that uh, provides a firm mount for the angle bracket. And on the right hand side I've got the 10mm nut onto one of the base units of the antenna. So we've now got a magnetically mounted antenna which is ideal for mobile. And then we can mount the coil on top of one of the base sections and we've got the basis for a very effective mobile antenna system but only for parking up not for on the move. Now it's time to uh, test the antenna out. I've got uh, my uh, IC705 which uh, I use quite a lot uh, these days and got uh, the zoom uh, antenna analyzer because uh, it makes it very quick to tune the antenna up. Uh, portable CW key there's a microphone there, but I tend to operate CW a lot when I'm operating uh, QRP. That's the antenna mounted on the vehicle. I've got um, a fright choke there because uh, you can get all sorts of problems with RF on the coax. And uh, I tend to put it at this end rather than the transceiver end. It seems to uh, work okay. But it's quite a uh, it's quite a neat installation actually. Let's, oh, the camera's, the camera's gone the wrong way. Let's go up there a bit. You can see. Well, I'll, I'll go back a bit. You can see the uh, the area from distance. If I go back there, you probably see the uh, the area. It's about uh, two and a half meters. So it's 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 almost three meters tall. So it can be quite effective. Sorry about the wind, there's a lot of wind again today. Every time I go video, video seems to be a lot of wind. But uh, anyway, I hope the microphone um, is uh, adequately protected. Let's come down a bit so you can see the car. <laughs> there we are. Uh, so that's the, that's the installation and uh, it, uh, well, it, uh, it does the job. And it makes good use of uh, what is actually a portable antenna. But with the um, bracket I've made, then it becomes more versatile. And of course, on the um, bracket, um, I've, I've got some terminals for using it, or adding radials. Um, radials don't work much on a, on a vehicle. If you've got, if you've got mental on a vehicle, you don't find as much benefit with radials. But uh, if this is mounted on a different system, then it's much easier to put radials on when you've got those screw terminals rather than just clamping it under the base. So that's the uh, that's the installation, and as I say, it seems to seems to work quite well. Good a good VSWR about 1 1.3, 1 1.4 uh, resonance, and uh, easy way to uh, go uh, portable when it's raining. If it's raining, you know you can uh, forsake a little bit of the height and put it on the car. You could of course put the whole antenna on the car, and then you'd have an antenna which is around about I don't know 4.5. Uh, 4.5, something like that, metres high, and it would be very, very effective indeed. But um, it's quite effective as it is actually, so I'm quite happy with it. Where I'm parked up, I seem to have a lot of noise, as you can see on the screen. But, uh, but, uh, it's uh, working okay. But uh, it's a lot of noise. I'm not parked on my own QTH. I'm parked at another QTH, and uh, I'm glad, glad I don't live here. There seems to be a lot of noise on the band, um, as you can see. So that's uh, <coughs> that's the radio hooked up to the IC705. Uh, didn't bring a microphone with me. 
<laughs> I bought a CWK. I had a, a couple of QSOs uh, with European stations, but uh, um, that's only five watts. And really and truly, uh, it, it's it's uh, it's more than half size. So it's going to be a pretty efficient antenna. I wouldn't use this when it's raining heavily, and I certainly wouldn't expose it to extensive rain because any telescopic antenna is not going to be good, uh, a good idea uh, in extensive rain because it'll eventually corrode. But for occasional uh, operation, it'll be fine. Just sort of wipe it with a cloth dry before you put it away and uh, you'll be fine. Let me show you the VSWR get on 20 metres. This is resonant on 20 metres and uh, just do a sweep here. And you see we've got uh, minimum VSWR of about 1.28 to one, which is more than adequate. So good uh, VSWR there at uh, resonance. By the way, I'm not sure whether I covered this earlier in the video, but you do need a 10 millimeter bolt to attach the lower section of the antenna to the alloy bracket. Here's the vertical at my holiday location and it fits in uh, very nicely. I've got, uh, I think, seven radials on the ground. None of them are longer than three meters. I purposely get the radials short because I find that uh, they work quite well and doesn't take up too much room. You'll see the kayak's cable running away to the right-hand side there. That is acting as another radial. And at the end of the coax, just before it goes into the transceiver, I've got a far right core just to choke off the common mode current. This is an example where the common mode current on the outside of the coax works well for you because it acts as a, an extra radial. You'll see at the base of the antenna I've got this aluminium bracket. I've got two sets of radials on. I've got one set which clamp beneath the uh, base unit as it meets that angle uh, bracket. And then I've got another set of radials which are actually uh, attached to the uh, bracket. This is sort of work in progress. I tend to have no more than three or four radials in a bunch, otherwise it gets really tangled, and then attach them in sets of four. Um, I haven't got the another set on at the moment, but I will add another set. So it means I'll have something like 12 radials, three metres long. And that seems to work quite well. Resonance is easily achieved with the adjustable uh, shorting bar on the coil and uh, one click either way makes a significant difference. I do find that um, probably on 20 metres one click will move you something like about I don't know, 200 kilohertz, maybe a slightly more. So the fine tuning is done by simply telescoping the uh, antenna in the appropriate direction. I, I normally put the antenna fully out and uh, then try and get close as I can to the resonance point with the coil and I aim for something which is perhaps slightly low. In this case um, the nearest I could get with the antenna fully extended and the optimum position on the coil was 13.9 kilohertz, sorry 13.9 megahertz. So I then telescoped the antenna down probably about uh, three centimetres and that got me into the CW section. Now here's another shot of the radials and they just go out at uh, any odd angle. Uh, what I, what I um, haven't done yet, what I will do is at the end of the radials I'll put uh, uh, tent pegs in so the radials are uh, stretched out and uh, somewhat neater than they are at the moment is the kind of tent peg I use, any, any tent peg will do the job. And I'll put a loop in the um, end of the wire, which I think you can probably see here, I've lifted it up. Put a loop in the end of the wire, just put the tent peg through, and that seems to do the job. And here you can see the tent peg in, in place, and it stretches the radial out. It means to say you get full benefit of the three, millimeter, uh, three, three meters of a radial length. So, how about this for a, a way of mounting the antenna in a very convenient place? It's a bit chilly today, but uh, you've got a uh, garden table with a hole in the middle to take the 
uh, normal shade, sunshade, and the sun's not out, or even if the sun's out. No, you can't put the shade out at the same time. But anyway, point is that if you've got a table with a hole through the middle, you can actually use that to poke the area up. And you've got your vertical area there, and you've got your little QRP rig there. And you've only got to stand up to adjust the uh, antenna for resonance. The only thing I would say is that I'm not sure about EMF. I think if you're running 5 watts, you'll pr be pretty safe. 10 watts, probably. I wouldn't recommend 100 watts though. So if you're going to run some QRP, you've got a table with a hole in the middle, stick your antenna up. That's another idea for QRP, portable, parks on the air. Mind you, you don't often find parks with tables with holes in the middle, do you? Perhaps you do. If you do, let me know. So that's the portable operation I did uh, about a week ago. Weather was against me again. It was horrible. It was raining. Um, but it, it was very windy and it stood up okay to the wind um, because it's, it's very low profile, the whip is quite slim and uh, there were 40 mile an hour winds blowing and um, it moved a bit but uh, it didn't fall over at all uh, so um, unless it's, you're exposing it to a very high wind uh, and I suppose if you're going to do summits on the air you might want to think um, uh, whether it'll be okay I think it would be, uh, I mean 40 mile an hour wind is quite strong um, it's the sort of wind that you wouldn't really want to be out in too long anyway. But uh, I operated it at uh, my holiday location uh, with Coax going indoors. So I was out of the wind itself, but it did, it did survive. So there we are. Anyway, that's the antenna. Hope it's been of interest to you. And uh, if you want to buy one of these antennas, uh, we've got them in stock. And I'll put a link below this video so you can, if you want to buy one, you can buy one. In the meantime, thanks for your support. Thanks for the support on this channel. Thanks for your support uh, on our website, etc, etc. And uh, in the meantime, enjoy your ham radio. If you're going to go out portable, enjoy going out portable. It's quite healthy. Um, just, just the weather sometimes is not that good, is it? In the meantime, take care. Look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.